I tried to cheat, but my plan was thwarted. Everybody, it's me, Margaret. I'm a Mississippi native, transplanted to Atlanta, Georgia, where I sheepishly share things I love with you. And today, I love you. You guys have been so sweet over the uh, loss of my kitty. And I, I know that that may sound really silly to some people, but it is heartbreaking for me and for others to lose a pet. And ironically, or not, that's not the word, strangely, there have been several other people in the yarn community who have lost their kitties as well and I, it's that's really strange that it happened all at one one time so i'm glad we have each other to lean on and um just thank you for understanding i appreciate it so i tried to film this yesterday and i didn't realize how pitiful i was looking <laughs> i thought i was fine but uh I know nobody wants to watch an old sad Margaret, so I'm reshooting most of it today. You'll see um, a little bit of it that I'm leaving in, but anyhow, let me show you what it was I was trying to cheat on you with. So what did I try to cheat with? <laughs> My March knit crate. Got it the uh, first part of last week, I think it was, and I was going to do like I did last time and not open it on camera. Well, that's not true. I did open it on camera, but I knew what was in it because I had peeked. Well, guess what? I opened it up. And here's the cards and stuff that come with it. But look at the yarn. <laughs> they kept me from being able to cheat. So I'm opening it for the first time with you on camera, March sock crate that's the one I chose and let's see what it is together I get so excited oh how pretty look at that um, looks a little brighter in real life, I'm seeing a little bit more teal color. Who makes this gorgeous yarn? Let's look. All right, so you get this card that tells you exactly what you've got. And this yarn is actually by a company called Knit One Crochet Two. And two is spelled T-O-O. And uh, Croc-O-Dye Croc is their fingering weight yarn. And I already told you it was 65% superwash wool, 20% nylon, and 15% silk. Okay, so what is the pattern that we get this time? Okay, because I ordered a sock crate, as you would imagine, it would be socks. These are called the Texas Hold'em socks. Isn't that a great pattern? This info wasn't on the card that was included in the box. You don't find it out until you go in to see the pattern itself, but it actually is including four different sock patterns based on cards. Get it? Texas Hold'em. You got hearts, diamonds, spades, and clubs, uh, each pattern being uh, reflective of one of those. And of course the actual pattern is not on this card. I go, I can get it you know, directly, I have a coupon code for Ravelry or wherever it tells you to go to get it. And then you have bonus codes too. Something from Kristen Amidal. But she's got one on here, Ingrid Monroe, Ingrid Monroe, pardon me, um, and Marie Jennings. And it gives you the codes on there for you to go and see what's going on. So I have a total reef tail value of $33.68 right here. That's a discount for fine yarn. Plus all these other cute things that you get too. That is, it's just fun. And remember, being a part of Sheepishly Sharing, you can go look in the description box below this video and there's our link that you would click on that takes you to the site and then you put the code in when you order, which is Sheep20. So you too can, get, well you would get an even better bargain because it's an additional 20% off your first box. So that's a pretty good deal. And the, <laughs> we were just talking about this in the last video. It's a little magnet, it's kind of a um, hard one. And look what it says. <laughs> Knitting forever, housework whenever. 
Yes, absolutely. How cute is that? This is by Knits and Bits NB at Etsy.com. If you want to see that, absolutely adorable. What a cute happy for knitters. Now, I chose to get Knit Crate's Sock Crate every month because I love sock yarn. And yes, I'm a relatively new sock knitter. However, I have loved sock yarn for a really long time. It makes not only wonderful socks, as you would imagine, but it does a great job with um, hats. I love the patterning in a hat, and I love that it's, it's a different feel. It's a lighter weight to use that thin, thin yarn like that. I got hair sticking in my eye. And it also makes a wonderful weight shawl slash scarf, you know, that you could wrap around you. I especially like that because being a smaller person, I don't look so great in big bulky scarves and things like that. As a matter of fact, I just don't wear them. So this is much more along my line. Now, Knit Crate doesn't call itself this, but I think of it as luxury yarn for a discount price because you're paying a set fee monthly and yet you're getting something really nice at a discount price. So, you know, and it's a surprise, which is fun. I mean, some people might not like that because they want to pick out exactly what they want, but I think it's fun to open it up and see what it is, even if I did try to peek without you. This is the Better Late Than Never Beanie, a crochet pattern that I have done over and over and over again. And many people have said, will you do a tutorial for that? And I could always say, no, I'm sorry, it's not my pattern. Kathy North is the designer of this, and I'd have to get special permission. Well, I did get the permission. I did complete the tutorial, and it is live now. So, funny thing about that tutorial, though. She gives instructions. Um, you may have seen this before, where you, you have to chain up, and then you do a double crochet in the same stitch as the chain or in the base of the chain is how I think she phrased it. And I threw in my little tidbit in the tutorial of how I know how to do that and one of the little pitfalls you need to avoid. And I got several comments on that going, oh, now I understand, whatever. So I took the time. It's really good for me to keep busy right now and editing and all really keeps your mind filled and busy and you don't have time to wander and feel bad if you have lots of things to do. And that's what I did, was another tutorial specifically for that little trip up, how to crochet in the base of a chain, which comes up in lots of patterns from time to time. If you're interested in that, that's up and live too, and it is leading me. People are beginning to say, um, oh, I don't, I don't understand this, what about this, and it's leading me to other troubleshooting type tutorials. I have no aspirations of being the next great crochet tutorial person by any stretch of the imagination, but when I come across a tip that I think I could actually add to the YouTube, YouTube community in some way, um, maybe I could explain something differently or whatever, that's when I'll take the time to do something like that. But for the most part, how to crochet, there's a bazillion out there already. It's the troubleshooting tips and stuff that I'm looking for. If I have something of value to add. YouTube gave me so much and I'm happy to give a little bit back. So also in the course of filming that tutorial, I made this little scrap version. And you know how I am about my scraps. I want to use every little bit of yarn because I think it's all valuable. And in this case, it was just little bits that I happen to have around and you tie it together with the black. It seems to, to unify the whole project. Now, I also shared my trick in that video, and I'm, I'm telling you all this now because I know not everybody's going to want to go watch that video because you don't need a tutorial, but remember this little tip. For a single crochet row, I discovered that if you need to measure to find out if you have enough yarn for a one single crochet row, you wrap it around the project seven times. Of course, you'd be working on it, you know, or whatever, but wrap it around seven times. If you have seven times around, then you have enough. Of course, if you're working on a larger hat, you're going to wrap around in a larger circumference, right? So it always seems to work out. Of course, up here, you would use a little bit uh, 
less than seven, but but you'd know you'd be safe in that in that uh, that little circumference measurement there. Very unscientific, but it works. Now, while we're on the subject of tutorials, this camel stitch beanie seems to be a request. I mentioned that I might do it, and I have a lot of comments going, yes, please, yes, please do it. This was my one that I do where it's just half double crochet here and camel stitch down here, with the camel stitch being an, an extra squishy stitch, adding more warmth for the ears. So this will be something that I will be working on here shortly. And also, I have one flower pattern that I have used on a regular basis, and I love it. And I always hear, will you do a tutorial for that? And um, I finally got permission because it's not my pattern, and she said yes. I was asking earlier, and I didn't get a quick response, or I didn't get any response. And finally, she said, yeah, sure, go right ahead. So I was really happy to do it. So that's also in my queue of things to do. And speaking of that flower, when you do this hat, I do it in the round so that I have no seam. Sorry, but that means that you'll get a little jog back here when you add colors. Now I could avoid that completely if I were to begin to taper off and then fasten off and add my new color and all that. But you know me, I'm going to take a shortcut if there is one. But wouldn't it be even better if you had a flower that you could just put right there on it and then you would never see any joins at all? So that would be great. So, um, but that's, that's just me thinking. And I brought these out here because I couldn't remember, did I show these orange and blue and white ones? Um, not sure if I showed these or not, but this is just me using up open skeins and or scraps, uh, trying to put them to good use and turn them into something nice. <laughs> Do you remember this book that I showed you before? It was given to me as a gift by Jennifer, Crafty Jen on Instagram. Well, Crafty underscore Jen. And I love this book by Ann Budd. Of course, it's basics, you know, that sort of thing as you would expect, but it also gives you patterning suggestions in the back for up the leg, top of the foot, that sort of thing. And if I chose one out of here that is a four stitch repeat, very basic, called the seed stitch rib. I was going to look for it in there, but I don't know why I need to do that when I have the actual thing right here. All right, it looks kind of like ribbing, but the pearls are seed stitch. And if you're not a knitter, or if you can't remember what a seed stitch is, that is when you knit, pearl, knit, pearl, knit, pearl, and then the next, and you're in the round, and the next row is pearl, knit, pearl, knit, pearl, knit. In other words, you have opposite stitches over each other. So the way this works, it's a four stitch repeat. And so you would have like um, the knit pearl is alternating, but then it throws in a double knit with it. So you get two knits and just that purling, the, the recess part of the rib is what is seed stitched. And I really like it. It's, it turns out really, it, it, it looks like a ribbing, but when you look a little closer, you're like, oh, that's a little different. Which, and it's fun to do, so I like that. So I'm cooking right along with that. Oh, and this yarn is the Regia Silk Color. And this, I believe, was given to me by Jen as well in that same gift. Well, let me just pick something to show here so the poor camera knows what to do. Erin um, had also given me some sock yarn, and I think hers was the Felici, and this was the other. But isn't it absolutely beautiful? Now, I'm looking at the back here, and as far as colors, I, I don't think it's called party. Do you see that right? I don't think it's called party. I think that's just referring to lot numbers and number color. I don't know. But, but anyway, it's a real happy color that works up pretty. And the stripes are not so exact that I worried about changing and doing a solid color heel so it wouldn't mess up the patterning. I think it looks fine. So I did make a little mistake right here. Do you see that little loop coming up? I don't know what I did. I didn't drop a stitch. It's definitely split, but 
That makes me a little nervous. So I will have to repair that. Now for today's treasure chest, I've got you up here in my bathroom because I have a totally unrelated to yarn, unrelated to crafting treasure that I need to talk to you about. And that is my facial cleanser. <laughs> it's called Paula's Choice Skin Recovery. And this softening cream, excuse me, skin recovering softening cream cleanser. It's for normal dry to very dry skin. And I would consider myself actually uh, normal, maybe even on the oily side, especially in the warmer. But this one is really, really gentle. Now, why do I love this one so much? It saves me a step. Now, most people have to remove their makeup, at least this is the way it's done these days. They remove their makeup with some sort of wipe or a special cleanser with pads or something, and then they wash their face. Well, that's just too much trouble as far as I'm concerned, not to mention the fact that I don't want to be yanking on my already sagging face any more than I have to, and this does the job, I swear. And I've been using this for over 10 years. I cannot find anything that I like better, and it's not for lack of trying. Once upon a time, I could only buy this from Paula's site, and I'll link that below, but now you can buy it on Amazon, so it's not that big of a deal, but I just... I just wanted to walk into a store and pick up a cleanser that I really liked as much and I can't find one and I still keep looking. As a matter of fact, the closest thing I've come to it is this um, Cetaphil. This is the copy. This is uh, a Walmart version of the Cetaphil or Cetaphil, some people call it, gentle skin cleanser. And it is gentle very much, but guess what? It doesn't take makeup off the way this one does. This one takes off your mascara. It takes off, it, 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 well, everything. Well, except for waterproof makeup and these lip stains. You can't, it doesn't really get all the lip stain off at all. So anyway, that's, that's kind of, but that's good because you don't want your lip stain to come off easily and you don't want your waterproof mascara to come off easily. So that's good. But this will take it off. As a matter of fact, if I have gone a day where I've had to put on a couple of coats of mascara because I had to go someplace or whatever, I'll take a little bit of this, put it on my finger, and then do this to my eyes first. And that helps to loosen the mascara. But most of the time, I just put some of this, maybe a quarter size, maybe a little less, and just wash my face as normal. I do use a wash rag though, so I don't know if that helps or not. Well, it does help for me, and I feel like it gives a gentle exfoliating type quality to, I don't know, but that's what I do. Love this. This I do use. It's a little cheaper than this, but only like in the mornings when I'm not actually trying to replace, I mean, remove makeup. And you know, I have sensitive skin, and anybody who has redness in their skin does not need to be using regular soap. I hope you know that. And certainly not anything with a fragrance in it. I didn't learn that until my 30s, mind you. Take away the fragrance, the redness disappeared. That was, it was like magic. And both of these are fragrance free. However, I tried this recently. This is an e.l.f. cleanser. I love e.l.f. products. I have a lot of their makeup. I think they are quality products for a reasonable price or even cheaper than a reasonable price, to be honest with you. And uh, now the cleanser, no, it smells wonderful. It's just got this really fresh, oh, got this really fresh smell to it. But it stings. If you get it in your eyes, it stings. So the fragrance already is going to make sensitive skin face red like mine. And it stings. It's harsh. I, well, I don't know if it's necessarily harsh on my face per se, but it was just bad to my eyes. So there wasn't any of this, you know, rubbing, trying to get your eye makeoff remover early. No, none of that works. So I say don't buy this. There's better stuff. If you're in Walmart and you want to pick up something from the drugstore or something, get a copy of this Cetaphil. But to be honest, best cleanser I ever had, ever. I'll put a link in the description box. She did not hire me to say this. She does not know that I exist. I really like this. 
Oh, and by the way, this person, when I say she, her name is Paula Begon, and she used to write these books you may remember from a long time ago, big, thick books, as big as a city directory phone book. It was called Don't Go to the Cosmetics Counter Without Me. That was the name of the whole name of the book. Don't Go to the Cosmetics Counter Without Me. And she would do reviews of all kinds of makeup, um, drugstore, department store, up, you know, fancy, whatever. And it was so helpful. That was pre-YouTube, so I guess you could call her the first beauty blogger. If you're new to my channel and you might think it's really weird that I did a treasure chest that was about something that was totally unrelated to crafting or yarn or anything like that, it's because it was something that I love. And on my channel, I sheepishly share things that I love with you. And one of the things I love about YouTube is the ability to learn from other people. They will share their experiences with a product or their experiences with a, a restaurant or place or whatever and then you can at least be forewarned about their experience but of course make your own decision whether or not you want to try those things or not. I think it's very valuable to hear what somebody has to say. Now, sponsored videos are a big thing. However, in most cases with products, you are not required to give a pretend review. You tell the truth. And you will see that I, am, uh, I have been given products to review, and I am very honest. As a matter of fact, I told you, I think it was the, the knitting journal, and I told you right off the bat that I was skeptical about that. I thought that was going to be stupid. And when I opened it up and saw it was really and truly different, I had to eat my words, and I gave you a little tour of that. And I think it's important when you find uh, people to follow that you do know that they are being honest with you. And with that, I want to introduce a new YouTube channel that's out now. It's called This or That. And the topics will range from all kinds of different things. But it's a new channel. There's only two videos out right now. And they're worth looking at. And I may be a little bit prejudiced because it is my daughter. <laughs> But she did a really good job. I wish that I my first videos were half as good as what she put together. Because, you know, everybody's first videos, they'll go back and look at them later. And they're like, ah, that's horrible. But Maggie did really, really well. But I thought it was a great topic. Uh, well, because I'm partial to that topic, I thought it was a great topic. And then, of course, I'm partial to the fact that she's my daughter. So if you're looking for something new to watch, I'll put the link to Maggie's channel down below. Her friend Kessler will be on it with her from time to time. But um, Maggie had ideas and went ahead and did that. Uh, Kessler seems to be maintaining their blog a little bit. Uh, that seems to be her focus more than being on YouTube. But, uh, yeah, so that's fun. So go check Maggie out for me and give her a thumbs up. I have some comments or tips or questions to share with you from the wonderful sheepishly sharing community, the flock I like to call us. And um, most of them come electronically, but the other day I got a note in the mail. Yes, real live snail mail with a little happy coffee. <laughs> this came from Sarah. She's known as Crunchiest One on Ravelry. There was no reason, really, for her to send this other than a really sweet note that she wrote in here. And, of course, that just totally made my day. It was before we had to put Smitty to sleep, and things were not going really well with him, as a matter of fact. So, Sarah, this, this little note came at a really good time, and I, I t really appreciate it. Actually, she mentioned in here that she had gone through some of my older videos. Sarah's been around with me for a really long time, but she went back through some of the older videos to get ideas of some things that she wanted to do, because she's a big charity knitter, uh, no, crocheter, she only crochets. And uh, she went back and found the old Riptide beanie, which I think that was a Meladora's creation video. Um, that she did or, or pattern that I had found a long time ago. And Sarah mentioned that she was doing that. So anyway, special hugs to Sarah for my real for true snail mail that I could hold and put on my wall and save forever. In the last video, I told you how much I loved the bath bomb that had come in the previous month's knit crate. And yet there was a problem with the mess it left in the bathtub. 
But listen to this tip from Melissa T. She said, oh no, what a bummer about the bath bomb. I think you can put them in a clean nylon and hang it off the faucet like a tea bag. It keeps all the leaves and stuff in there so it's easier to clean up. Now, wasn't that a genius idea? Now, Dixie Girl 9876 told me about a couple of charities. One is called Octopus for Preemies US. They have a, they're on Facebook, and I don't have the link to that, but you can search Facebook if you're interested. And let me show you what that is. Here's an article from CNN. See this pattern for this crocheted octopus? It helps preemies feel comforted or secure. It's supposedly this feels like the umbilical cord. I'm sorry if that grosses anybody out, but remember these guys are just new to the world. And it's like a little, another little baby. It, it provides comfort and calm for premature babies. So I think that's really cool. And they have these all over. And then the other one she mentions is the Magic Yarn Project, Crochet for Tiny Cancer Fighters. And what this is, is crocheted fairy princess, Disney princess wigs. They have the pattern. You follow this pattern exactly. You can send them to them or you can start a program locally. Uh, they have this website here that you can go to to find out all the different ways that you can get involved. You can hold a workshop. It's wonderful and it's all over the world. Lots of different places. Look at that pretty rainbow wig. That, that photographer was excellent in this. Homespun wigs for little cancer fighters. Isn't that adorable? You know when you're grieving, you really need to take time to grieve, to allow yourself to work through those seven steps of grief, and yes, I know all about that. But you also can't wallow around in your grief. That's not good for you. It's not good for anybody. So one of the things I do is I try to surround myself with, th myself with things that I love, whether that is... Um, Bentley and Cozy, my family, yarn and any yarn related projects, watching you guys on YouTube, which I love to do, and keeping myself busy with projects. And uh, these tutorials were really helpful because when I edit, I just get, lo I totally lose track of time and stuff because I'm so focused on how I'm trying to present this information. But my tutorial setup was not exactly how I wanted it. I really wanted to change the angle so that it was a little bit easier. I always had to remember when I'm filming directly over my work that I had to hold my hands in such a way that you could kind of see from your angle what it would look like. Because you don't crochet directly over your work like that, do you? You crochet with it kind of at an angle in front. And sometimes editing was a pain because you had to zoom in on certain things when, you know, I could have just lifted it closer because I knew I would. Anyway, to make a long story short, I've been really thinking on this for quite some time. How can I make this possible? Yes, you can go buy this boom thing uh, that holds it. You can move it out. No, I don't want to buy anything. Come think it up. So the other day, I had an idea. And while I was in the process of trying to work this thing out, I got tickled and I had to take a picture <laughs> and put it on Instagram. <laughs> I said, I promise I'm not angry or creepy or anything. I'm creative problem solving. To be continued. So then I went back to my project and this is what I came up with. Now my daughter says this was terrifying and my sister said it was disturbing, but I said, no, it's all in how you look at it. Because these guys were stuffed in an old garbage bag in the closet. Now that's pretty disturbing and creepy too, but now they can be a part of the yarn creation. So see, it's all in how you look at it. Now I've had this little box. It was sitting up here where I could put the camera. This is for when I use this camera right here. It fits down in there. And that little opening is for when I use my phone. I made these little clay things to sit here because it lifts my phone up to where it's right there, which is what I want. So that's what that is. The tin foil, the aluminum foil, keeps the thing from, fall, from sliding down. But now you can see, 
I crochet like this, I can see over it and I can see it here if it's on my phone or the, the LCD screen right here. So laugh if you want to at my foam heads, my curtain rods, my throwaway box, my aluminum foil. I don't care. It works. My goal is to be able to do these videos weekly, but it seems like life often gets in the way. For example, decorating for the military ball. We had to devote a whole day to that. And um, then, of course, we went up to take pictures beforehand just because it's so, it's so beautiful to see them all dressed up in their dress uniforms and the girls coming in in the gorgeous dresses. And on this particular day, it happened to be very windy. So the full skirts were just blowing gently in the wind. Well, maybe not so gently. It was some pretty strong wind there. But it was really fun to see them coming out and under the saber arch. A lot of the older guys have dates, but for those who don't, that it's an open invitation to young ladies all over the metro area. And it's a really neat thing to see. It's not your typical high school experience. There's a formal dinner before the dance, and the guys even had etiquette classes, which I would have absolutely loved to have been a fly on the wall to see. <laughs> Thomas did not have a date, and there was one point where the commandant went over and got him <laughs> and brought him over to talk to some girls. And then, of course, while the commandant was holding court, Thomas snuck off. And my oldest son said, I don't blame him. I would have snuck off, too. That was awkward. <laughs> but anyway, it's, it's a great event and really fun. Well, I mean, it's really fun for them, but it was really fun for us, too, to see, you know, the, uh, the formal, the events leading up to the formal event. Of course, Dad and I were there later, late, to take down everything because the mess hall had to be completely put back in its original form because they were serving breakfast there the next morning and that's how that works. So that's all for this video. So I hope to get one up next week, be on a more regular weekly basis. Hopefully things are slowing down. Talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs>